I thought that my fish tanks, for the most part, had pretty clear water. And that was until I saw a bunch of really awesome tanks that actually had crystal clear water. And that's why I'm making this video. We're gonna talk about the thing that all of the pro aquascaper dudes with the fancy tanks use and try and figure out if it's actually something that makes a huge difference. It's this stuff right here. I'm not gonna keep it a secret for much longer, don't worry, but I have to tell a little story first. Back in 2019, I went and hung out with Jeff and Mike Sensky. They own this really cool company called Aquarium Design Group. They have a bunch of amazing aquascape tanks. Super fancy aquariums, as I like to call them, and I'll probably refer to them in this video. They build out really big tanks for clients, and they also have a retail store, and they're just a couple of aquascaping dudes, my kind of people. And you don't really realize how just impressive some of these tanks are until you see them in person. Like the camera can sometimes do it justice, like at how clear the water is and how cool the scapes look. But when you go see it in person, the effect that it had on me was like, well, I, I must be doing something wrong. Cause my tanks, my tanks are clear, but they're not like crystal perfect clear like these. So I asked Mike, I was just like, dude, how how do you, how are these tanks this clear? Like this is, this is kind of weird. You must be doing three water changes a week. You have to be like, I don't know, using RODI water that then hits some kind of polisher before it even hits the tank. You remineralize it a little bit. And then like, again, you're changing the water like three times a week. There's no way. There are a few different things that go into the whole process of maintaining water that looks that good. But part of me was like, this just has to be fancy aquarium syndrome or something. Like when you see a tank that has really high lighting, literally no algae, and like it just, it looks unreal. So maybe it's just my subconscious filling in the blanks and just making the water look clearer. I mean, that was the only thing that I could think of. But the Sensky bros, you know, the like the dudes at Green Aqua, that level of aquarium keeping, that sort of high tech world that I used to kind of almost live in, all of the dudes that are in that world say the same thing. They all say it's because of this thing that they add. And I don't know, I was skeptical of it at first. I messed around with it a little bit over the years, but didn't really pay enough attention to see if it actually gave me the effect that I wanted. Again, I thought in part because maybe it was just that fancy aquarium syndrome. So so I decided that it was finally time to actually do a test on this and then kind of break it down and see if it's actually all it's hyped up to be. And look, I really want to emphasize prefacing this video with you do not need to buy stuff to make your aquarium water clear. Okay, you can get it naturally. A lot of my tanks, I mean, for the most part, all of my tanks for the last 10 years haven't been using any kind of additives that I had to pay for to get to clear water. This video is talking specifically about getting to that weird sort of like fake next level of super clear water. And so, you know, that's not gonna be everybody saying you certainly don't have to do it, um, but somebody's gonna ask and that's why this video is being made right now. We'll talk a little bit later after we reveal this magical stuff. We're gonna see if it's actually magical or not. Uh, you might actually be surprised at the outcome here, uh, but then we'll talk a little bit more about sort of the natural things that you can do, the more normal, easy, hands-off methods to just make sure that you don't have weird problems with cloudiness and to just have a healthy planet tank that is clear. It might not be super crystal perfect fake clear, but it's gonna still look really good. But we're gonna go talk to an expert about this stuff because he knows a lot more about it than I do. All right, Andrew, we have like 30 seconds to film this, okay? Uh, there's finally a break. No. And there's not, never mind. <laughs> so the question that I have, and that I think a lot of people might have is like, you come to a place like this. Mm -hmm. I should have introduced you as the store owner, but Hi, you Andrew own- on Pisces. <laughs> you own this awesome <laughs> store. Uh, but when people come to these places and they see these tanks, yeah. the water's super clear, Yeah. right? And I know that a lot of different aspects of aquarium keeping goes into making right. these yeah. really clear. Um, Common but there's, question, why is your water so clear? Yeah. But yeah, you, like, you come down here and you look at these tanks, all your guys' tanks look just really, Thanks. really clear. What's What are the main things? What are the main things that make this water so clear? Yeah, the first thing is always water changes, right? Fresh water is always clearer than dirty water, but 
Overfiltration is a big one. So we run five to ten times the gallons flow rate in the canister, right? So there's mm -hmm. a 20 gallon tank, we got like a 250 gallon per hour canister on it. Okay. And it's full of biomedia. Biomedia breaks down all the waste potential in there, so it keeps the algae down easier that way. Sure. And we also add purigen in our filters. Purigen is a great resin that sucks up color out of the water and organics out of the water. So if you need that extra little clarity boost, that's usually the answer for us usually. So that was that was the secret yeah. thing. Yeah. That's not so secret. So that there's dragonwood in there. Like that was producing tannins and. Uh, Obviously, it's not right now. All right, you can't see it anyway. So yeah, it is, unfortunately, almost kind of hate to say it, it's Purigen. I promise you, CCAM does not know I exist or not paying me any money to make this video. Just wanted to highlight the fact that it is a thing that I consistently come across as, like, the thing that makes the water really clear. Purigen works kind of similar to activated carbon. It's almost like it's the beefed up super strong version of activated carbon it's also more selective in what it absorbs so with carbon you're going to get more of a broad sort of a weaker attraction to a lot more things activated carbon also similarly will take tannins out of the water it will help to clear up your water but pure gin just seems to be like its older brother that's on steroids. Purigen seems to be a little bit more selective in that it hunts for like nitrogenous carbon-based molecules. So some of those are gonna you know, make up tannins, but the claim that Purigen will reduce the amount of ammonia nitrite and nitrate in the tank, I think is one of those kind of like reaching things. Like they know on paper that Purigen will take those compounds out so they won't get broken down and thus they won't turn into those nitrogenous compounds. But I don't know what the actual proof for that is. It's a good theory and I think, you know, it probably is true to a degree. You probably would also see a little bit of that with activated carbon too, because it does look for organic molecules as well. Bringing those compounds down are gonna help to make the water a little bit clearer for you. If you have a problem with excess of those things being excreted in the tank, like if you have a bunch of wood or you're using a lot of soil, Purigen is a little bit more expensive, but it seems that the consensus is that it lasts longer or it does, it'll do more work for you than activated carbon will. So maybe, you know, you'd have to do the math to figure out what one is actually cheaper or which one actually lasts longer. But I think Purigen is the one that most people lean to as being like the best thing to use if you're trying to go down this road. You can also recharge Purigen. There's like a method for soaking it in bleach for an amount of time. Basically, once you check it, and it's a really brown color, then you know it's probably getting close to the end of its life. You can take it out, you could recharge it, or you could just replace it with new stuff. That's probably what I will do. Um, I'm not super wild about doing things with bleach and aquariums these days. But yeah, that is my almost kind of scientific take on how Purigen actually works. Probably missed a bunch of things. We're gonna check out how this stuff actually works later in the video. We got a direct comparison of putting it into this tank. So you'll be able to see if it actually did anything for me. But anyway, that's my take on it. Let's get back to talking to Andrew and finish up hearing what he has to say about it. Yeah, so that was the thing that like I learned several years ago when I went to go to a Purigen Design secret. Group. Purigen is the secret. And like this video isn't sponsored by whoever makes Purigen. I can't remember if it's Ccam or API or one of those giant mega corporations, but that was the thing that the aquarium design groups yep. told me about. Yeah, that's that, why I do it too. That was yeah. the thing that I mean, they use a ton of it over at Green Aqua. All of the fancy aquarium places use Purigen, and that's not the only thing that helps you get this water, but it is. It's one of the bigger things, I would say. Okay, because you also run. I'm sure you run. Do you run activated carbon as well? No. No activated carbon. Exactly. Okay. Maybe in the first like couple of weeks if you're using a lot of soil, a lot of wood, but Purigen works for us for the most part. Okay. In that canister, do you have a ton? Do you have any mechanical filtration? Are you using a polisher or anything? Um, just that pre-filter. Just the pre-filter. No so no, yeah. nothing special. Yeah. Not overdoing it. Okay. Lots of biomedia. I left that last orange foam at the end just to catch some anything big coming through. But usually the pre-filter gets all the little bits in this style of thing. Okay. And then you have like a skimmer on the yeah. top to get everything out of the top. <laughs> it's got some moss growing. Yeah, that's in it. a <laughs> that one's been on there for a while. Okay. But yeah, that works good. But other, I mean, that so helps with the top of the tank clarity, but not the like water clarity, you know. Right, right. So it's, I mean, it's the pure gin. It's the pure gin, yeah. And lots of, lots of biomedia. Lots of biomedia. Lots of biomedia. Okay. I mean, 
There's only 10 fish to make waste in here. There's only a whole shrimp colony in here. The water itself shouldn't get too discolored from the fish, you know? It's more about the wood and the soil and the tannins just dealing with it. Right, right. And the Puritan does a great job. So always low bio load yeah. as far as plants and fish things. goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Puritan plays a big role in pulling organics yeah. and other things that can contribute to, you know, like algae issues if yeah. you have crazy nitrates, phosphates in the water, even though you are dosing it. So there's yeah. some kind of, right. there's a balance there that you have to figure out. The skimmer to get things off the top of the water. Right. And then... Just weekly water changes like normal. Weekly water changes. Yep. Interesting. Maybe two weeks at this point. <laughs> All right, we are back from Pisces. You know we had to get a few things, so let me show you. We got one, another little small UNS tank for the guppy stuff that I'm doing. And we also, I got one of these Churros LEDs. So I couldn't really swing the big one. It was like 500 bucks. That'd be one for like a three or four foot tank. But this little one, you guys know how much I like the little O and F lights. They have a better aesthetic, I think. I think this one looks like only slightly dumber, but it's more powerful. And I'm just curious to see like what kind of colors it throws. So pulled this one out. It's like 20 bucks more than those O and F ones. Thought it might be worth it. And then we also got like four bags of the Purigen to mess around with. We got just some random food to test, and I got like four tissue cultures of a type of hair grass. So just a little, I can't, what species is this? Heliocaris bacilla, I think is how you pronounce that. So uh, you can never have too much hair grass. Don't know where I'm gonna put it. Uh, I hope we don't just put it on the edge of a tank and forget about it because that does seem to happen sometimes. But yeah, let's go out to the fish room and I guess start working on some tanks. I wanna get that Purigen installed and who knows what else we're gonna do here. The fish room is still a, <laughs> a nightmare disaster, uh, but we got the boards all for the rest of the racks done. So probably install that later. Not sure if I'm gonna show that, just ignore that side of the room. But we're gonna be looking at this tank for a while. So this is like, one of my only really good looking plants to tanks, at least in my opinion. It does need some work though. So a lot of organic waste down there that I want to remove. Since we're going to be getting into the filter and taking, you know, shutting things off, we might as well get in and do a little bit of maintenance. I want to get a before video and picture of the tank before we add the Purigen so that we have something to try and compare it to. So I'm just gonna kick up a bunch of stuff here and then have to wait because again, like there's a ton of organic material down at the bottom. It needs to get dealt with. I haven't removed it just because it hasn't needed to get removed. Like it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's not causing any problems in the tank. We don't have a bunch of nitrogen building up in here or anything that's causing any problems, no algae. So will the Purigen really do that much for the tank, it's already pretty clear. That is what I am curious about, and hopefully I didn't just waste like 30, 40 bucks on the stuff. You can use Windex to clean the outside of your glass, you just don't wanna accidentally squirt any in there, kinda aerosolizes. I'm not sure how bad it would be if a little bit of that got into a tank, especially with this volume. I don't think it would kill all your fish, but if you don't want to risk it, Fritz Glass Cleaner, shameless plug. Fritz is an awesome company. They've treated me very nicely over the years. You don't have to worry about that with this. And don't forget to get yourself a premium microfiber cloth so you don't accidentally scratch your tank from aquaproshq.com. Another shameless plug. But that's gonna allow us to get the tank pretty much as clean as possible and give us the best comparison at the end of it. Okay, I didn't film it, but all I did was pick out some of the yellow java ferns. I didn't do anything down to the substrate. I didn't siphon any of the junk out because I don't want that to mess with the comparison, right? So if we put the Purigen in and it turns out to really clear up the water, I don't want anybody to think that, oh, it's because you removed a bunch of organics that were contributing, you know, I don't want that to cloud. I don't want that to cloud the little experiment. So let's just turn our filter off and get into it. I'll find where this thing's plugged in at. Probably way in the back. So we are definitely not over filtering our tank like Andrew was talking about. He was running an Awaza 800 like this on a tank that was 
uh, three times less in size. So like on a 40 or 50 or 60 gallon, he would run one of these and you know, I'm running it on a 180 basically. So I'm gonna pull this whole thing out. Can't do it with one hand though. I think everything is good. We got the quick disconnect turned off or unplugged there. Let's just slowly bring this big heavy guy out. With these Awaza canister filters, you know, you have the heater inside it. Um, you also have your pre-filter sponges. You just unlock it and then you can pull this whole thing out. It is full of water though, so you have to take it somewhere. Unfortunately, don't have the sink up and running yet, so I'll have to take this outside. The more that I think about it, the more I don't want to do anything, like clean the pre-filter sponges or any of that, because that would obviously introduce a little bit of bias, right? If we clean them out, then they're going to be able to capture more things, and that could bring down like the discoloration, the little bit of it that you can see through the long way of the aquarium. You can't really tell that there's any kind of discoloration in the water from just looking straight at the tank, uh, but you know we don't want to mess with the little experiment we're doing. So we're just gonna very carefully open this thing and try not to disturb things. I mean, it's gonna be impossible. We're gonna disturb a few of the layers, but hopefully we can get away with not like totally messing with it. So come on, buddy. Just very slowly pull that out and our heater is not on. Check this out. So this, is what we're dealing with, like super cake, very not clean. This uh, this filter hasn't been opened in, I don't even know how long, a very, very long time. I can't remember what we have in the layers of this whole thing. I need to get a towel. I like to put these things like back in the correct order that they were in, just in case I forget. I don't think it matters too much. Like if you, I mean, they're all the kind of the same basket, but you just want that top one on top, so. Again, doesn't really matter. It's looking like I have mostly sponges in all of these trays. Like, I think there's like six or seven of these trays in here. Now we're finally getting down to like some K whatever media. So there's some, you know, knockoff stuff. But like one of those, two of those, then that might be it. I think, yeah, then we just have like a big soupy, <laughs> a big soupy thing the rest of it. Um, I think I am gonna dump this out though, just because I don't know if you can see that, but uh, yeah, kind of gross. So I think what we're gonna do is take one of these sponge baskets and put the purigen inside of it. So we'll take one of these out. You know, we are losing some good bacteria here. Unfortunately, that's why you need the towel, but we're gonna go ahead, try not to get too much gross fish tank stuff in us. Um, Actually, you know what we could do is we could just put this on top of the biomedia because I think we have enough room. We'll try that. Each one of these bags is rated for, what does it say, like 100 gallons. We're gonna use two of them. We could probably even use more if we really wanted to. We'll go ahead and put our one sponge here back. Um, so something like if this doesn't work or whatever, like just know that we could make some changes to this to really fill everything up with biomedia and follow more of what Andrew was saying. Like, all of these baskets would basically be a ceramic ring or something like that. And then in the top one, maybe that's where we would put the purigen. So we just put everything back. We're gonna put these down here at the bottom where they were. Again, I don't think it really matters that much. Like you can gamify all of this stuff as much as you want to, but at the end of the day, as long as water is going across the purigen, I don't think it really matters what stage it's at. I could be totally wrong though. Feel free to yell at me in the comments. Just gotta get all these baskets in the right spot. Let's see if we can do three at once here. Speed things up a little bit. Find the right spot. Boom. Try not to suck up any rummy nose tetras. I don't think they wanna go in here. You don't have to fill it up all the way. It doesn't really matter. Like we're gonna be able to reprime this thing anyway, but just a little bit of water in there. And we gotta go get our thing out there. Here's the unclean sponge filters. Remember, we didn't do anything to these things. I'm sure they're super caked up and disgusting, but I think the flow's gonna be okay. Should be, it was before, I think. It was probably terrible, and I'm just not remembering right, but uh, that's all, that's all we have to do. So let's get this guy back in here, try not to get soaking wet. 
Let's uh, let's plug it in. Whew, okay, so we had to fight with that thing a little bit. Still kind of, you know, going through its thing, but it looks like eh, the flow isn't terrible. It's blowing a bunch of stuff out because it's just, it's going to do that no matter what. Even if you go in there with like a fine tooth comb and do a really quiet, easy job on it, it's still going to just blow stuff out. Like impossible to get around. This thing is just going to do its thing for, I don't know, probably a few more minutes and then it will be quiet and nice and easy and back to normal. I do always like to stick around though, clean up you know, what little drips I have and just make sure that it's not gonna leak. Cause you never know, you take any a canister filter apart and then back together like that, you always run the risk of having a little leak. So I just try and get everything where there's a little bit of leftover water, make sure it's all off the ground, even behind it, you know, and then that way I can check back in 10, 15 minutes and make sure there's no issues. It only took another 30 seconds after I was doing that for it to quiet up and we can see still some debris coming out of there, a little bit of oxygen bubbles. Flow is good, so our pre-filter sponges aren't terrible, but the tank is obviously a little cloudy. So hopefully the Purigen will help to reduce that. Uh, probably not gonna act any faster than normal. Water's gotta turn over, it's gotta go back through the filter a few times. And I don't know, we'll see how fast it makes a difference, if it makes a difference at all to this tank. And yeah, it totally does say to like soak this stuff in tap water before you put it in, just because it has to hydrate itself. It does soak up a bunch of water. Uh, I don't think anything bad is gonna happen. Like it's not gonna, shouldn't leach out anything negative into the water. And I think ultimately it's gonna work, but I should have mentioned that and I should have probably soaked it, but I think it'll be okay. Upon further inspection, guys, it does appear that the unwashed Purigen does make the water a little cloudy. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually recommend that you do follow the instructions and pre-soak it. Maybe you would eliminate that, but that's what we're seeing a little bit of, you know, sort of that gray cloudiness in there that's definitely not durable. We would have seen that if we would have just opened up the filter. So it looks like it's not coming out weird out of the filter anymore. So I'm sure this will just resolve itself and it's no big deal, but We'll check in tomorrow. Okay, it is less than 12 hours later. Just coming out to the tank the next morning to check it out. It looks like all of that weird cloudiness that was probably from the unwashed Purigen is gone. The tank looks basically as clear as it did before. Like, it's tough to tell right away if there's a difference, but I already took some video from the side of the tank that we can compare to yesterday's side of the tank view and hopefully that'll give us a little bit of a better answer as to if this stuff has worked for me yet. Again, only been 12 hours, so I don't know. If we go another 12 hours, is it gonna be slightly more clear? I don't know. This stuff should just continue to take things out of the water, but there should be a, a point at which it saturates itself. And so, you know, something that you add like this to a tank isn't gonna last for forever, and you are gonna have to either recharge it or replace it with new stuff. On top of all this, we didn't really clean our filter out. We left a bunch of organic material down at the substrate. It's all over the place in this tank. So I'm sure that's basically going to, you know, most of it go into the Purigen. And so what we put in there probably isn't gonna last as long as if we would have just cleaned the filter right off the get-go. But again, I wanted to do just as close to a only adding the Purigen test as possible. We didn't wanna mess with any other factors. So here we are. Final thoughts on Purigen. I think, it could be a cool tool for you to use if you have, I mean, especially if you have tannins in the water, like it's obviously gonna pull those tannins out pretty well. Is it better than activated carbon? I haven't done the direct comparison. I know if you ask the internet, most people will say that it does work better than activated carbon. Just sitting back here and looking at my tank, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even really notice that there was a slight tinge to the water, like the clarity of it still looked really good, but it did remove that sort of slightly almost brownish color to the tank. Is the water actually clearer and can I see more details in my fish tank? I don't know, I, you know, no, right? Um, there could be something about the fact that we didn't rinse the stuff and there could be still a little bit of cloudiness 
as a result of that. So we'd have to wait a little bit, I guess, for me to have a 100% final opinion on this stuff. But just looking at the tank from here, I'm uh, not really seeing an immediate difference. I know that some people have done some probably better comparisons than I have. I did a very minimal amount of time worth of research and I saw a couple dudes had some videos where they showed a comparison in their tank and you could tell a big difference. Maybe it was because they had more tannins than I did in this tank to begin with, sort of a thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, do a little bit more research. Don't go out and just buy this stuff because you watch just this one super long video on it, right? Like really think about if it's worth the 10 bucks, the 20 bucks if you're buying two bags of it or whatever. If you truly have issues with cloudiness in your water, it's probably because there's some other issue going on that I don't think Purigen would necessarily solve. If it's tannin based, then yes, I think it would solve your problem. But if it's a bacterial thing, you know, if you're feeding too much food, you have way too much fish in a small tank, just adding a bag of Purigen isn't going to solve your problems, I don't think. You kind of got to get back to the roots of the whole natural fish keeping thing, making sure that your water is clean from like a, a plant perspective. You have enough plants in your water. Your system is air quotes balanced enough, right? With the fish, with the food, with the materials that you're using. And then that's going to solve like 99% of your issues or your cloudiness issues, I think. And just don't forget that the food that you feed your tank has an impact on what your fish tank looks like. Here's two tanks side by side. Which one looks better? I won't even say. I will say that this aquarium right here is getting legit fish food. This one is getting a food from a giant corporation that knew if I existed, then they might sue me for defamation. And that's why we're not going to say their name, but that can have an impact, a pretty big one, even if you're feeding the same amount. So that I think is gonna be my take on Purigen. Is it the secret of all secrets? No, can it help you get clearer water? Yes, but it's gonna take a lot more than just the Purigen to get your water super clear. I think this tank right here is proof of that. You know, if we spent more time keeping the mulm and detritus to a minimum, if we were doing more water changes, that would probably help as well. This tank could probably look as good as some of those tanks that Andrew has or that the other fancy aquarium guys have. I would just have to put in a little bit more time. And I think, you know, you can get to close to that without any time and having a supernatural tank. Maybe I'm just trolling myself here and I need to let my little Purigen experiment last for longer than 24 hours before I make uh, any statements about it. Or maybe I need to beef up my biological digestion in my filter because we've already established that we were just using sponges. I think I might spend the next few days trying to gamify the filter mixed with the Purigen and kind of cleaning things up a little bit to see if I can actually get my water to be freakishly clear. So I think we'll probably have a follow-up video on this at some point. I'm not sure when, but I think we should try. But at the end of the day, do you really need to have your water be that clear to make you happy with your fish tank? That's a question that only you can answer. And so I'll leave you with that. Thank you so much for watching guys. And we'll see you in the next one.